Hey, thanks for watching Joyce's YouTube channel. We pray you find encouragement and exactly what you're looking for here. Did you know that these videos that you watch for free are available with the help of our Joyce Meyer Ministries partners? As a result, people are learning how to apply God's word to their lives and come out of some really dark places. If God's using these teachings to bring you closer to Him, let me encourage you to join us and become a partner today. Join the team that is sending His Word around the world. You can do big things together with us. Scan our QR code now and begin sharing the love and knowledge of Jesus Christ everywhere. This program is made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Now, I don't care what kind of a life you have, you're never gonna really enjoy your life because God won't let you if you try to do it apart from Him. I'm Joyce Meyer and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. There is a way that you can make ordinary everyday life extremely extraordinary. And that is when you learn how to do life with God. Now that's the title of my message today, which is not hard, but what I'm gonna share with you today was probably one of the most profound things that ever happened to me in my spiritual walk. I just realized I didn't finish the story about Mike, so I'll go back and finish it. This morning I realized I didn't finish the story I started last night. Um, Mike became so serious as a Christian. And one night he was sound asleep and Penny woke him up and said, Mike, wah, 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 wah. Mike, are you ever going to make me laugh again? And he said, what? What are you, what? What are you talking about? First, he didn't get it. Then about a week later, his mother called him and said, Mike, are we ever going to talk about sports again? See, when he became a serious Christian, <laughs> he forgot about everything else in life except just doing something that he thought was spiritual. And I remember going through the same thing where I actually felt guilty just doing anything ordinary, and even when I was doing ordinary things, I didn't enjoy them, I just wanted to rush through them and get them over with so I could do something that I thought was spiritual. You know why? Because I felt, I felt that I was more pleasing to God. Come on now, you're gonna get this today. I felt that I was more pleasing to God if I was praying or studying the Bible or going to church than I could have been if I was watching TV or sweeping the floor. Do you know that lighting a candle in a church is no more sacred than lighting the candles on your two-year-old's birthday cake? If you're doing it with and for God. Now, I don't care what kind of a life you have, you're never gonna really enjoy your life because God won't let you if you try to do it apart from Him. The way to bring enthusiasm into every ordinary day is to do ev to learn Learn Colossians 3, not just as a scripture, but something we put into practice in our life. Do everything in the name of Jesus, in dependence upon his person, giving praise and glory to him. Everything, everything that we do. I hope that I can convey to you in the little bit of time that I have this morning how life-changing this was for me. When I stopped dividing the sacred from the secular. And I realized that everything became sacred if I did it with and for God. 
Come on, you're going to like this today. This is going to help you. God didn't meet with Moses in a temple. He met with him at a bush. Come on. A bush. And when God showed up in the bush, the ground became holy. So everything that we do, if we do it with and for God, it becomes holy. Woo! Everything we do. You know, yes, I like looking good, but one of the reasons why I exercise and walk five miles a day, I'm doing it for God because he told me 12 years ago, if you don't start taking better care of yourself, you are not going to be strong for the last 30 year journey. And I want to finish what God has called me to do. So I know that I, in order to do what I'm doing at my age, I have to do that. And so it is something that I'm doing for God. Therefore, even though it's hard, I can actually tell you I enjoy it. Because I do a lot of my praying while I'm walking and I talk to God while I'm walking. And we've got to understand that God's not stuck in a church somewhere. He's everywhere. And God, now listen to this. God is never more than one thought away from you. Did you hear that? God is never more than one thought away from you. He's here all the time, but you can bring him right into your awareness just by thinking about him. We even overly spiritualize prayer. Prayer is just having a conversation with God. We don't have to become like a different person now because we're praying, oh, most holy thou. <laughs> Get out of here. God don't want to hear that. <laughs> just act like who you are. It's me again, Lord. And prayer doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be eloquent. When the Bible says pray without ceasing, we can actually do that. We can pray our way through the day. Thank you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. God, help me with this. You're awesome, Lord. You're wonderful. For so many years, even as a woman who loved God, he was just this little spiritual part of my life, he lived in a little Sunday morning box. And the rest of the week, I tried to do life on my own. And I only called on him when I had a crisis. I only called on him when I thought I was over my head. Well, you see, I, I've learned that I'm always over my head. <laughs> I mean, I am so far over my head, you have no idea how much trouble I would be in if God didn't help me. Amen. Amen. People talk about, you know, well, go deep. <laughs> well, you know what I figured out? When you're over your head, doesn't matter how deep you go because you're still dead if God don't help you. <laughs> and so... I had God in this little Sunday morning box and I didn't know any better. Nobody was teaching me any better. And back in the 70s when God really touched my life during the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was taking place at that time. And by the way, you don't have to wait for some special outpouring. You can have more of God anytime you want to. Anybody can be as close to God as they want to. It all depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. Yes. I said, anybody can be as close to God as they want to. It all depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. Anybody can make an adjustment here today and say, from now on, God, you're going to be first in my life. You're not going to be second. You're not going to be third. You're not going to be after my job, after this, after that. You're going to be first. And I don't care what else has to be cut out. You're going to be first. God is before my ministry in my life. He's before everything else. And the more I learn that, the happier I get. Relationship with God is not supposed to be a burden. It's supposed to be a lot of fun, joyful. And, and I'll tell you something that has happened to me over the 40 years that I've been serving God. 
And if you're not here, I pray that something I say today will help you get there. I am just really comfortable with God. I mean, I'm just comfortable with the Lord. I don't feel like I have to pretend. I don't feel like I have to put on airs. I don't feel like I have to try to impress him. God has taught me, Joyce, I knew what I was getting when I got you. And there is nothing that you do that will shock me. Because I already knew every wrong thing you were gonna do before you ever did it. I know every word in your mouth that you have not yet spoken, and I know every thought that you have not yet let drift through your mind, and I love you anyway. Amen? And I felt like God told me a while back, I was, I was trying to change something. He said, you know, I like you just the way you are. Now, you see, you don't know what to do with that. <laughs> One man over here went. <laughs> yeah, he likes you just the way you are. I didn't say he likes all the stuff we do that's wrong, but he likes you. There is a difference. You got to separate your who from your do. I am a child of God. I don't always do everything right, but I've got some good news for you. I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Yeah. Woo. And I'm gonna celebrate my progress because it makes the devil mad when you celebrate. I don't know if you know it or not, but God likes a party. I mean, you go read the Old Testament. They were commanded to have parties. It was not an option. And they had long parties, week-long parties, several-day parties. I mean, they party. <laughs> and I love the story about what we call the prodigal son, but really that story is just as much, if not more so, about the elder brother. And the elder brother was a religious guy. He didn't know how to enjoy life. When the son came back, the father was so overwhelmed and so full of joy that the first thing he wanted to do was have a party. And I love this. Don't miss what I'm going to say. The elder brother refused to go in. <laughs> he stayed outside and had a bad attitude. But you know what I noticed? That didn't keep God from throwing the party. And here's the thing I want you to know, God's got a party going on. And even if you don't want to come, there is a party going on and I've decided to go to mine. I'm going to the party. I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to enjoy my husband. I'm going to enjoy my kids. Jesus came that we might have and enjoy our lives and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Come on, if you want to make the devil mad, just get happy. Just get happy. You say, well, how can I be happy with all these problems? Well, you better learn some way to get happy with problems because you're likely to have some all your life. Seriously. <laughs> oh, we are so stinking religious. <laughs> Can't listen to a song if it's not a Christian song. <laughs> now, I don't want to get myself in trouble here today, but... Obviously, I am in no way, shape, or form suggesting that we even begin to think that we can participate in things that are not clean or proper, but everything that we do doesn't have to have a so-called Christian label on it. Yeah, good. I got one person over here with a tiny clap. There's a party going on. God wants us to enjoy life, but you got to stop dividing what you think is sacred from what you think is secular and realize that all of life is to be done with and for God. And if you can't do it with and for God, then that's a clue. Don't do it. 
Amen. Listen, I have no trouble at all knowing when to turn a television show off. That doesn't mean that sometimes I don't hang on to them a little longer than I should because I want to see the end. I know we're just like you, but I'm just saying that we know. We know right from wrong. We do not have to be afraid of liberty. We do not have to have all these legalistic rules and regulations for following God. We are led by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. I know when I need to shut my mouth because I'm gossiping and God doesn't like it. I know when I'm saying something about somebody that I shouldn't say. We know when we're doing something that's wrong. Let me just give you a few things I got on my list here. <laughs> Common things are sanctified when they're done with and for God. What does it mean when something is sanctified? Now, I don't have it here, but I got this really pretty crystal glass that we carry on the road with us for our conferences. And, you know, kind of, so to speak, that glass is sanctified because that's my glass. It's for my water. And that's what we use it for. Now, we're sanctified by the Holy Ghost. We are set apart and made holy for God's use. And God uses ordinary things, common ordinary things, just like he met with Moses at that bush, but the ground the bush was on became holy because God showed up. You have to think about this for a while after you go home. Common things that becomes, can become sanctified when they're done with and for God. Grocery shopping. Household chores, cleaning house. Ex <laughs> Exercising, driving in traffic. Going to the same job. <laughs> one more day. Stay in one home, more hotel. Study for one more message so I can preach to one more group of people. <laughs> Come on, it doesn't matter what it is. Anybody, if you're going to be faithful to anything, there's going to be times in your life when you are just going to want to rip your hair out and scream, I cannot do this one more time. And that's when you do a little turnaround and you say, God, but I will do it with and for you. Now, let's talk for a minute about motive. Boy, our motives make such a big difference. Such a big difference. You know, I even look at getting, when I get dressed in the morning, I look at it like I want to do, I don't want to look good just for the sake of looking good. I represent God. So... I want things to look nice. I want my clothes to not look like they sat in the dryer all night and I just pulled them out and put them on because we represent God everywhere that we go. I mean, I see some people and I think, do you not have one mirror in your house? <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> well, we should do our best for God because we are his representatives in the earth. So even in things like that, if we do it with and for God, it takes on a whole different thing. I remember when I learned to go to the grocery store with God, talk to God in the grocery store. Some of the most exciting times in my life was when I was Young and just newly baptized in the Holy Spirit. And some of this stuff may sound silly to you, but I don't care as long as you get it. I remember when I, right after I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit and I was bowling one night and I wasn't bowling good, and God said, ask me to help you. I thought, I'm not going to pray about my bowling. Because <laughs> see, I didn't think God cared about that. Are you here? I didn't think God cared about anything ordinary. 
It had to be something spiritual. And so sure enough, I prayed and I asked God to help me and I started bowling better. I remember another time when I was fixing my hair and I had one little piece of hair that I could not get to go in place and I was so mad, I was ready to just beat myself in the head with a hairbrush. That's the way I used to handle stuff. And, and the Lord just impressed him hard, asked me to help you with your hair. Well, I gotta pray about my hair. See, God, listen to me, please. Don't make me come down there and get you. Everybody listen. God cares about everything you do. And get this, he wants to be involved. He wants to go to the grocery store with you. He wants to clean the house with you. He wants to help change the oil in your car. He wants to walk with you when you cut your grass. He wants to drive with you in traffic. He wants to do blue sky with you in green grass. Are you there? I love the Amplified Bible where it says that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be in close fellowship with us. The Amplified uses that term several times, close fellowship with us. Jesus didn't die so we could all have a religion. <laughs> he died so we could have a personal relationship with him through Christ, through, through him, with God, a personal relationship with God through him. And he sent the Holy Spirit. How much closer can you get than in you? God is as close to us as our breath. And we don't have to do anything without him. All the chores of daily life can be sanctified and made sacred when we do life with God. I love that phrase. God gave me that doing life with God. I say, what are you doing, Joyce? I'm doing life with God. Monday's not much different than Tuesday. Tuesday's not much different than Wednesday. All days are sacred to me. I don't even have a big deal with, with holidays. And you know, the, the Bible says that. It says to some people, all days are alike to others. They make certain thing out of certain days. You know, I want to just love God all the time. And I want to be with him all the time. I don't want to just have a Sunday morning, two-hour visit, and then put God back in his Sunday box and not do anything with him until next Sunday. And that's the way I used to be. In Jeremiah 2, verse 32, it says, my day, my people have gone days without number, without calling on me. That's the saddest scripture, days without number. And in Jeremiah 2.13, it says, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and they have dug their own wells that have no water in them. You know what that means? They don't, they don't remember me, and they're trying to do life on their own. We don't want, God don't want us to live like that all week and then run off to church on Sunday morning and think we've done our spiritual duty and read one chapter a day and pray a prayer before you go to bed at night. He wants us to pray our way through the day. He wants us to pray without ceasing. And see, when we say that, I mean, for years, that would just overwhelm me, pray without ceasing, because I had this idea that I had to go get on my knees somewhere in a corner and pray all day. I thought, how can you live life if you pray without ceasing? But I didn't realize what I'm trying to share with you today is that you can pray anytime, anywhere, about anything. You don't have to change your posture. You don't have to change your voice tones. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be eloquent. <sighs> Come on, we don't have to be all stiff. We're in the house of God. Just be comfortable with God. Hanging out with God's like putting on your most comfortable pair of jammies. Am I making sense today? The sacred secular divide is a view of life based on dividing things that we think are spiritual, like Bible study, mission work, 
from secular chores like running your business, going to a party, watching a movie, things like that. See, I don't have to feel any more spiritual when I go to church than if I'm watching a good, clean movie.